Global resource management is something that many of our customers are struggling with and looking for a tool that will help them do the proper job in this area. Uh, because of this, I was a bit, a bit inspired and I decided to show you how you can do it nicely with Big Picture. Uh, and hopefully the example that I'm going to show you today will be inspiring. What I'm going to go through is uh, demonstrate how the portfolio management on the level of individuals and on the level of teams can look like. And I will also make, um, I will, I will also, also take the, an opportunity to explain a new update that has been dropped just today uh, by Big Picture in this area because it is kind of important and it changes the way that we can interpret the data and it's better than it was before as it should be with a new update. So hopefully this is going to be interesting and let's dive right into this. Uh, by the way, if you would be looking for someone to help you explain the intricacies of Big Picture or any other project management tool, you can always reach out to us. We are super happy to help and you can hire us uh, for paid services, but you can also uh, reach out to us if you don't know which tool to pick and we will schedule a free session with you and with you know all best interest of yours in mind, we will help you find the best tool for the job if you will want to follow up with some work and hire us to help you implement the tool, we will be extremely happy to assist. If not, we still del deliver value and you will be happy that we spend this time together. So choose the, uh, the description of this video, send us the email or just go to our contact page on geniusgecko.com and uh, drop us a message. Now let's get into this. So what we are looking at right now over here is the breakdown of one of the portfolios that I've created for some demonstration or actually multiple demonstrations with different customers. So I'll, I'll quickly go into the breakdown of what we have over here. So we have a, like a portfolio view that is on top of the other portfolio view because one of the customers w w wanted to have a portfolio inside a portfolio. Then we have programs and inside the program, we have program increments. If I expand the program increments, you will see iterations. And of course this hierarchy is uh, different for different customers. So for you, maybe you will have prog portfolios and then projects underneath the portfolio, maybe projects broken down to smaller pieces. It doesn't really matter, right? Because what we want to focus on today is the portfolio piece. So either this or that, I will actually go to the top view because this will be something that most of you will do anyway. So I'll go to the top view. So the box that over here that is called portfolio view. So that's the one I'm going to get into. And I'm going to switch to the resource module. So a very cool thing on the level of the portfolio is that you can look at the whole port portfolio from the perspective of your resources or resource planning, however you want to call it. And that's automatically available. If you would be looking for um, having Gantt view over here as well, that's not that straightforward, at least just now, but there are some workarounds. So if you want to learn how to enable the Gantt view over here on the portfolio level, reach out to us. We will show you the trick uh, to make it work. But resources, resources are here and you can easily access this. For those of you that don't know this tab, and I'll let me do some tidying over here. For those of you that don't know this tab, this is the big picture resources module and it allows you to work in two different views, so to say. So the first view is the individual one. The second view is a team view, right? So depending on what kind of resources you're looking to manage, individual level, team level, you will switch between one and another. And before I started recording this video, I've cleaned up this screen a bit so that we are looking at the information that are relevant to us. Uh, therefore, some of the things are hidden. I'll show you how to bring them back up over here a little bit later. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the specific time frame. In this case, I'm looking at the quarter. My data is grouped weekly, right? And I'm looking at two rows. So the colorful one shows you how much time is allocated to a, a specific resource, individual resource in this case. And the gray boxes show you the capacity or the availability of the people over here. And you can see that the uh, load is fluctuating, right? So for example, Yaroslav over here has 0 0.7, 28, 58, 105, right? So that's why the colors are changing as well. Um, 
and the capacity is fluctuating as well. So, for example, there are 40, 40, 40, 40 over here. Suddenly changes to 24, to 32. So there are some changes in the availability of a certain person over here, which, of course, can be done using Big Picture. Now, the change that has been done over here in the recent update is that previously these numbers were able to show you something higher than the standard availability of the person. So what does it mean? Let's say that someone made a mistake and assigned this person to several different teams. And he's assigned to one team for 100%. He's assigned to another team for 100%. Let's assume that the person is working with standard availability, standard work week. So which that means 40 hours per week. Uh, therefore, what Big Picture did previously is, uh, show, is that Big Picture shown over here 80 hours of availability per week, which of course doesn't really make sense because just because someone assigned a person to two, two different teams doesn't necessarily or suddenly mean that this person doubles the availability, doubles the capacity. It's simply not the case. So now, if the number is going above the user's standard um, workload plan capacity, it will simply show that. It will not go beyond that. So if we assume that standard is 40, even if I assign this person to several different teams for 100% availability, it will still display 40 over here, which makes a lot more sense nowadays. So that was kind of like a, a UI change or logic change in the UI that actually makes this a little bit more digestible. Uh, but what I'm uh, what I want to say here the most is that this is the view that allows you to look at your resources globally through the whole portfolio, right? So the data that I see over here, this data is coming from all the items underneath my portfolio box, right? So underneath my portfolio box, I have several other boxes and all of the data from those boxes is being taken into account over here. So all of the numbers in terms of the uh, workload of the person is coming from the issues that the person is assigned to inside the portfolio that I'm looking at, right? So obviously it does make sense, but it's important to highlight this because that basically means that this view gives you an overview of everything that is happening in terms of your resources under a certain um, branch of the tree of your boxes. Now, if you would have one portfolio at the top of everything else, what does that mean? That means that you get a global view of all of your resources. And you can use this view to plan individually. You can use this view to plan per team as well. You can see that I have some test teams over here. I have DevOps, I have ERP, and I have some data on the level of teams too. So it shows you both areas. And usually when you're talking about global view, you want to focus more on, on the teams, unless you're a small company. So I'm highlighting that the team view is available over here and it's super useful, especially if you're working with global teams uh, and not uh, team, uh, project specific teams, because then the approach uh, has to be a little bit different. Um, therefore, this view will help you understand who um, has what kind of a workload, which team is uh, over, over um, allocated, which team is not over allocated. And it will help you in the short term planning. It will help you in the long term planning. And of course, of course, it helps you also to look at the past data because you can use this view to also look at how your teams have been performing in the past and draw some interesting, important, valuable conclusions out of this as well. Um, okay, I promise I'm going to uncover something over here. So the thing that I've, I've hidden are tasks. And you can see that if I add tasks, uh, this becomes a little bit more crowded, but thanks to this, now you can exactly see where the team uh, or what the team is working on, right? So this week I can see, okay, these are the tasks that the team has to uh, focus on. If I click this number, I can see exactly how the breakdown of um, the workload looks like. So I can see that there is uh, one issue that contributes the most to the 72 almost hours. And then there are some less important issues that possibly uh, can be maybe moved somewhere else if the team would be over allocated over here. It's not, but it's, it is over here, right? So again, I can see that there are two issues that contribute heavily to the number. And then I can decide, okay, maybe something can be moved somewhere else. So all in all, this is where I would go for the global view. Uh, I do not explain here how to work with global teams, how to define them, 
how to make sure that they are nicely synchronized with Jira. That's a topic for another video, I would say. Uh, if you want to learn more about this, we of course have training that can teach you that, or you can simply hire us and help you go through the whole implementation process, which we've, uh, up until now, we've helped more than 200 companies get the environment that they are happily working in. And we keep doing amazing job in this, in this area, if I can say so. So, uh, hopefully this was useful. If it was, consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel if you're not subscribed yet because we have more interesting content coming in regards to project management in the in the Atlassian area in general. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be seeing you in one of the next videos.